The collection of over 16,000 skulls in the Archaeological Museum in Lima makes it possible to study the pathology of these ancient cultures. These Paraca and Nazca skulls were subjected to a traumatic deformation, apparently simply for aesthetic reasons. For a long, thin skull was a symbol of the upper class. The deformations were achieved by means of two splints, one at the frontal bone and one at the occipital bone. Then increasing pressure was applied and over the years this gave a flat forehead and a high cranial vault. Many cultures both before and after the Paracas, even the Incas, carried out brain surgery using rudimentary surgical instruments made of obsidian. The only anaesthetic used during these trepanning operations were the hallucinatory effects of the chicha. Normally they operated on fractures and blows to the skull received in battle, and to a lesser extent migraines and other pathologies. The percentage of patients who recovered following the operation was very small. In these samples we can clearly see how the bone grew in those who survived the operation. It is also evident which are those who did not survive. The basic weapons of these peoples were clubs and maces, striated to cause even greater injury. Blows were mainly directed at the head of the enemy, and that is why skull fractures and the subsequent trepanning to treat them were so common. Battles were frequent and cruel in these ancient civilizations. One proof of this is given to us by the Sechin culture, which developed around 1,500 years BC in what is now the coastal province of Kazma. The stele, which surround a rectangular stone building, tell us of a battle in which victors and vanquished are depicted in a remarkable bas-relief technique. Mutilations of limbs, faces of dead warriors with closed eyes, blood streaming from their heads, backbones. The Sechin had a surprisingly detailed knowledge of the human body. This stella represents the eyes of the defeated. On another, we see intestines, parts of a pelvis, bones. Later than the Sechin, the Chavin de Huanta civilization arose and flourished from 1000 BC to 300 AD. It was the most influential in Peru. At the Raymond de Stele, one of the most important finds from this period, we see the anthropomorphic figure of their god of creation with feline and bird-like features. In each hand it holds a staff, the symbol of the power of the Andes. In every corner of Peru we find pyramids and tombs. The country is one enormous archaeological treasure, and experts estimate that only 15% has been discovered. Every day, gangs of huaqueros or grave robbers defile a little more of this world cultural heritage. Each of the cavities we can see in these images corresponds to an ancient tomb desecrated. It looks like a moon landscape. The majority of ancient cultures buried their dead with everything they possessed. Alongside the burial site of an impoverished peasant, may well lie that of a powerful landover, who, on this journey into the afterlife, took with him all his gold, turquoise and other precious objects, and it is these which are sought after by collectors all around the world. The grave robbers are poor. They steal out of necessity, running the risk of being arrested. 
The minimum sentence for raiding an archaeological site is 10 years imprisonment. The sacred site of Sipan stands on a former Mochica cemetery. Often when a new grave is dug, they find a mummy with its treasures of pottery and decorative objects. Here is buried the first grave robber to enter the funeral pyramid of the Lord of Sipan, the most important archaeological find in America in recent decades. His name was Ernil Bernal Samami. A fellow waquero who entered the pyramid with him tells us the story. Me and Bernal and another friend we were the ones that discovered the Lord of Sipan. It was one night when we were looking for work and we didn't find any. We went to Naguaca and Bernal, he had, he dreamt he found treasure and we went in at night. We started to dig eight meters and we had light so we could see the hole. Then Bernal said, look, it's gold. We have to go in and see. We went in to take a look and there we found the Lord of Sipan. All around there were decorations, a lot of gold, and we went in and carefully we started to take things, kept on looting, but there was real commotion in the village, and Bernal started to throw out soil with gold, and people started to take all these things, the objects, the treasures of Sipan, and everybody went away happy. The next day, we didn't dare go back to the place. We were afraid, afraid of the police, who were really keeping guard over the area. Everyone in the village loved Bernal because all his wealth, everything he found, he started to give it to the people of the village. Everyone in Sipan heard that he was dead, and everybody, all the village, cried. He died in his house. They came for him as if he was a dangerous criminal. They were armed and they started to shoot at every part of the house, over 250 policemen, and all of them firing at the house. He came out of a corner of the house and they shot him in cold blood. He was a good man, an honest man, hard working and one of the best grave robbers. Fortunately, they did not reach the chamber of the Lord of Sipan, but they did destroy that of the priest. Entire generations of grave robbers have, since the arrival of the Spanish, systematically destroyed the archaeological remains of Peru. Every day, gangs unearth and ransack yet more ancient treasures, which they then sell to the illegal dealers in antiquities for a few miserable dollars, but enough to feed their families. These objects are made of gold and come from the tomb of the Lord of Sipan. The police seized them from the grave robber Ernil Bernal and they provided the clue for the archaeologist Walter Alva to discover the extraordinary Moche Mausoleum. Hundreds of pyramids remain to be excavated. They look like hills due to the effects of the rain which, though scarce, deforms them, causing them to blend into the natural landscape. This is the Huaca Rajada, the crack tomb, as the burial complex of the Lord of Sipan is popularly known. Excavations are still going on at this extraordinary find. It is the first time that the burial site of an important Moche nobleman has been discovered intact. This complete series of different interrelated elements, 1,700 years old, represents a decisive advance in the study of this culture. The discovery of the tomb of the Lord of Sipan sums up all the drama of archaeology in Peru, a country with an extraordinary past, with many monuments and remains of different peoples and cultures which flourished one after another over a period of 3,000 years. Few resources to conserve them and constant ransacking of these monuments in order to sell to collectors. 
Sipan is a moche sanctuary. It was about to be looted at the start of 87 when Peru was going through a very severe crisis. The grave robbers, the gangs of ransackers, looted entire areas, the archaeological sites. It was a scandal. A tomb was raided, some gold objects taken. The police intervened on the 23rd of February of that year and seized some gold objects. I went to the police station one night that summer and was astonished to see two or three spectacular objects which must have come from an incredibly rich tomb. The next day, I went with the police and we saw that, in effect, a very rich tomb had been looted. The police continued to investigate, and we tried to protect the place, but it would certainly have been destroyed. Almost the entire village, urged on by the traffickers and the professional grave robbers, were coming to the monument to destroy it, to ransack it. We decided urgent action was needed, and after a first dramatic intervention, which meant chasing away the grave robbers and the villagers who had taken possession of the site, we began work on what we considered was an archaeological rescue mission, and which, six months later, led us to one of the most fascinating archaeological discoveries in the New World. Buried in a wooden coffin, the first to be discovered in America, the Lord of Sipan lies surrounded by enormous quantities of gold and silver objects. In the replica which occupies the place of the original coffin, we can see these ornaments, a reflection of his status as governor. His body is conserved in the running museum in Lambayeque. He was buried along with his three wives, a warrior, a priest and a child, and further up in a corner the guardian, his feet cut off to symbolically prevent him from escaping. He was a boy of around nine years old, who, because he was pure, would be able to lead his master into the afterlife. Close by, hundreds of pottery vessels filled with the food they would need in the other world. Everyone considered it an honor to be buried alongside the great lord. His personal counselor was the last to be buried. Logically, it was a high-ranking lord. There are jewels, gold ornaments, quality objects, and a wealth of gold, silver, and metalwork that is simply amazing. But we also discovered that these objects and these jewels are special religious symbols that provide us with in-depth knowledge of the Moche world. Thank you.